Ronaldinho, pé direito, bateu! Kramaric Masterclass. I haven't said that for a while when it comes to the Croatian national team, but boy, did he step up in a big game for Croatia. And two fantastic goals by Kramaric. And Croatia, just clinical. And Canada, they got, they got, they got put to the sword. They got, they got taught a lesson today on the high quality of international football. We're going to break it down. We're going to be here for about 10 to 15 minutes. And then we got to start preparing for Germany against Spain, the big one. So, look, Croatia just, when the first goal went in, of course, Alfonso Davis scores the first ever goal for Canada at the World Cup. Great cross in from Tijon Buchanan, who I absolutely love as a player. And then Alfonso Davis makes up for the penalty miss and scores the goal. And you thought, ooh, Canada, all right, they're going to they're gonna show up in this game. Croatia said... That's cute. That's cute. Let's. I'll show. You, we show you how to play Fuji ball. They pass it around. Beautiful. See, when you have that midfield with Kramaric, I mean not Kramaric, Kovacic, Brozovic, and Modric, they can pass around any midfield in the world, any midfield, and they showed it once again today. The first goal by Croatia, the beautiful, beautiful pass from Kovacic gets out wide to Perisic and Perisic into Kramaric, and that is a golazo. I don't know what Atiba Hutchinson is doing in that situation. He should be tracking Kramaric and following his man. What does he do? He stops running. He stops running. I don't understand why is Hutchinson stopped running from that situation, but it's a great goal from Kramaric. And then you got to give it to you got to give it to Croatia cuz they they were just slowly slowly just getting into the game, getting into the game. And then Juranovic, I think he had a combination play with Kramaric out wide. Great combo play. Juranovic drives, drives, drives with the ball. Nutmegs, I think, one player. Then gets it to uh, Livaya. And a great finish from Livaya. You can say, Boyan, what are you doing in goal? But I think that was a great finish from Livaya. Bottom left corner. And Croatia just sucker punched Canada before the half. And they were up 2-1. And then after that, it was easy for Croatia. Like, okay, yes, Canada had sometimes the ball at the edge of the box or in around there. But... Like, they didn't create anything inside the box. That just shows how defensively sound Zlatko Dalic's side is. They don't concede a lot of chances inside their own penalty box. And then the third goal, again. Perisic crossed to Kramaric's back post. Wonderful touch to fake it that he was going to shoot. Because it was a perfect opportunity to volley with his right foot. And then he said, all right, I'm going to switch it to my left foot. And then a calm, calm finish. And then the fourth goal is a mistake by, I think it was Miller, the center back for Canada. And then, you know, Orsic sweaties it towards Meyer, and it's 4-1 Croatia. And you have to say, though, Croatia fully deserved to win this game by two or three goals. They were just clinical and just the passing. They, they were just so calm in possession because, you know, against Morocco, they didn't create a whole lot of opportunities, Croatia. But today... I mean, Kramaric could have had a hat-trick because he had that one chance. I think it was also Kovacic, I want to say, who had the great chance. I think it was Kovacic who had another brilliant opportunity. Same with Perisic. So this could have been 5 or 6-1, people. We could have seen Annihilation. But Croatia are just such a damn good team. A systematic team. And that's what I love about them. And that's why I had top in this group because they have somewhat evolved with the players they had in 2018. You see defensively. Three of three of those players are new: Sosa, Juranovic, and obviously Gavardiol. Gavardiol, by the way, that's a top-class center back, and he will become a top-class center back in the world. And you know, Livakovic doesn't really need to be tested, and he hasn't made any mistakes yet that cost Croatia. And he made a great, great save on Jonathan David. And we'll get to Canada because I'm a little bit disappointed in Canada. But I mean, you you just simply when when John Herdman is going with this sort of lineup, right? Let, let, let's quickly look at the lineup, people. It was it was basically a four four two in a way, but then it was switched to a three three five two at times. But I mean, if you're gonna play two man midfield with Atiba Hutchinson, who's thirty nine years old, one of the greatest players for ever, ever for Canada, he's always been with the program. And Estakio, and I love Estakio, didn't have his greatest game. I don't know why he got hooked at the halftime. I thought, all right, give him until the 60th minute, but I guess John Herman saw enough with that. When you're when you're playing two man midfield against Brozovic. Kovacic and Modric, good luck with that. That's all I have to say. 
Good luck with that. And Croatia, oh, boy, oh, boy. They are just such a good footballing side. They don't play long balls. They just keep possession and just pass, pass you to death. That's what Croatia do. And that's what they can do with that midfield. Okay, I think for Canada, look... You played great against Belgium, should have won the game. You played good in the first half in this matchup where you look dangerous at times. And what I want to know from John Herdman, okay, you take off Kyle Lorreen and you take off Astakio. Like, why would you put Davis as striker? He's 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 perfect on the wing where he can take on players. I don't think he wants to receive the ball back to goal. He wants to take on people. That, that's like, that's the problem with this substitute and this change of formation. I think that suits... Because you saw Davis. He was beating like a couple players in the first half. And then the second half, okay, at times he got the ball. But you just didn't see that same impact from Alfonso Davis in the second half compared to the first. And look, defensively, just Canada have to get better if they want to compete in 2026. They're going to be a good sign in 2026. But if they want to be making, you know, quarterfinal, semifinal, defensively, they have to get better. Because at times today, they were just all over the place. All over the place were Victoria, Miller, Johnston... Richard Larea, it, it is just difficult. And also, I have to talk about, and Seeker of Truth just reminded me, Jonathan David has been so disappointing, so disappointing. I thought, you know what, here's your opportunity. You're at Lille, you do very good with Lille, you're one of the top goal scorers in Liga. you haven't had pretty much any impact at this World Cup. Any. I mean, okay, you can say, has he had any real glorious chances? He had a couple of chances against Belgium. But Jonathan David needs to be more involved with the play and create that little pocket of space for himself. He hasn't done that at all. It's been a really disappointing... If if you were thinking to yourself, who could be one of those players who could stand out at the World Cup and make a name of himself? You would think, okay, maybe Jonathan David. It hasn't been at this World Cup. It hasn't. You look at Tejon Buchanan. I love the player. I think he's going to become a good player in Europe. Obviously now at Club Bruges. And, well, Club Bruges are in the round of 16 in the Champions League. And, of course, Alfonso Davis is just an absolute baller such a baller it's just i think canada need to get better defenders and midfielders i think that's what they need to develop in the next couple of years and also of course these guys can become better like victoria miller johnston i think johnston got linked to actually celtic if i'm not mistaken so you got players there you just need that other midfielder next to stockio that's what you need and i think somebody said that stockio was injured was this okay so stockio got injured in muscle injury back of the leg okay gotcha 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 i didn't know that actually i didn't know that all right, well, it's just a clinical showing from Kramaric. Just an absolute clinical showing from Andre Kramaric, man. I, we've been very, I've been very critical of him and saying, okay, you know, he's a good player, hasn't had the greatest season with Hoffenheim, but today he was, he was something else, man. He was something else. The link-up play, one time when he went, he went sprinting all the way down, he was tired after that. You just got to give it, man. When Kramaric is, is a good player. He's just so inconsistent. It's it's scary at times. But today, when Croatia need him, steps up. You got to respect that with Kramaric. And he gave us all and got the two goals and fully deserved it. And obviously was involved with the goal for Livaya. Brilliant performance from Kramaric, as you can see here. Successful dribbles, accurate crosses, accurate long balls. He was just everywhere on the pitch today. And Kramaric is by far man of the match. And also, got a shout out to... Ivan Perisic, I thought Ivan Perisic was as well. Wow. Perisic looked like the old Perisic, not the one at Spurs. Perisic was taking on players, doing 100 stepovers, but the stepovers were clinical, and he made a great decision-making like he did with the cross towards Andrei Kamaric for the third goal. So, look, I'll say it again. Croatia systematically defeated Canada today. They did, like, do you think Croatia played like an all-time game? No, but they were just clinical, and they just... Passed the death out of Canada today. <laughs> like, seriously. Because I need to check. How many passes did Croatia complete today? Let me just quickly check that. Actually, to be fair, Canada had more <laughs> passes and more accurate passes. But it just seemed like with Croatia's passing, it was just so deadly every time. So deadly. Yeah, I'm confused too. I'm, I'm confused too, Hugh. Uh, I don't really understand it because he was. I think he was at fault for the first goal, not tracking Kramaric. And you just saw a couple times when... If any of the Croatian midfielders were driving with the ball, unfortunately, Atiba Hutchinson just doesn't have the legs anymore to cover it. He just doesn't, and that is a big problem if you ask me. I can imagine, I can imagine. As we're soon getting game time, and Croatia's midfield just ran around the whole match. Yep, 
Look at Kovacic, man. The amount of ground Kovacic covered today was amazing. Canada's chance miss should have won against Belgium. Exactly, exactly. And yeah, Guevara. No, he's not overrated. No, man. He's he's young. He's going to become a good player. I could, yep, yep. And Croatia had more effective passes. Agreed. And big up to Wiki Tiki, man. Haven't seen you during the World Cup, but now you're here. So look, this is what I said. Croatia didn't allow any chances inside of their own box. The only chance they gave up was the first two minutes when Alfonso Davies scored. Otherwise, they said, okay, cool. We're going to force Canada out wide and you try and break us down. And they couldn't even get anywhere near the goal. Obviously, Jonathan David had a shot at the edge of the box in the second half. And then Junior Hoyle at the end. Other than that, nothing. Nothing. So, Croatia's defense is very, very good. And that is something that I think a lot of people have been talking about. And, of course, Isaac has talked about it with me during the preview that this Croatian defense is better than four years ago. I think I'm... I am starting to see why. You just see that there's just organization. They're great young defenders. And you got you have a guy like Lovren, just a leader, and he knows what to do. And you got a guy, a young goalkeeper like Livakovic, who's prone to errors, but hasn't been called upon so much during this game. And Hunt says here, man, today you can see that, that Davis is the only high-quality player for Canada. Yeah, David Buchanan and Stocky are all good players with potential, but the only... Oh, yeah, of course. The only world-class player is Alfonso Davis. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, they don't have any imagination. That's that's the problem. And Canada don't really have a creative midfielder. I think like Eustachio could be that guy, but obviously he's injured. And he just didn't have that same impact in the first half as he did in the entire game against Belgium. And Jonathan David, just uh, just disappointing. Really disappointing. Oh, I bet you have been. I bet you have been. Yes, he is. If there are... If there were two or three more quality players, Canada would have won. Davis is a beast, not a striker, though. Exactly. That's why I don't understand. Why did John Herdman switch him to a striker in the second half? Play him out wide. Let him take on the players. Let him take on Juranovic and see if he can beat a man. I think still Croatia can make a quarterfinal. And Croatia have still to qualify. will not bank on it. Canada were not uh, streetwise. Made Croatia look better than they are. Nah, man. Croatia were, Croatia were amazing. I mean, not amazing, but they were just effective today. I mean, look at the XG. Look at the XG, people. Obviously, you know, it's inflated a little bit because... Of the last goal, which was basically a sweaty goal, but man, Croatia were just fantastic today and just clinical, 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 and a Kramaric master class. That was that's what it is, people. So now with that result, Canada are eliminated from the World Cup. So sorry, Canada, you put in a great effort. You you won a lot of people during that game against Belgium. Obviously, you lost the game, but I think this shows. All right, you're doing well with the program. But there's levels to the international football. And they got taught a lesson in this World Cup. Be clinical. Be defensively sound. And don't talk too much before the game. <laughs> because what John Herdman said after the Belgium loss. That we're going to do this to Croatia. And then you saw the Croatian newspapers come with that. That's just. You're giving. You're giving blueprint before the game. Oh. Croatian players read that. They see what they, was being said. We're going to show you what football is. We're going to show you football. But I got to give it to Canada. I think they're going to be a great team in, in 2026. I think they're going to be very dangerous. And they could be making a round of 16 quarterfinal then. Now, all you can hope for, beat Morocco and get your first ever World Cup win. You got your first World Cup goal today. That's great. But now get your first World Cup win over Morocco. As for the other teams, man, Croatia and Belgium is massive. It's massive. But with the way Belgium are playing, you would fancy Croatia in that game. If Kramaric can continue with this form, that's the problem. Croatia just need to get that clinical guy. They need to get one of those forwards on fire. And it could be Kramaric. It could be Perisic with the way he played today. They need, need another guy. And obviously, Livaya scored as well. So two of the forwards scored today. But that's a massive game now. It's a massive game. All Croatia need to do is just defend and get the draw. And Morocco have a fantastic chance of now finishing top of this group. Right now, if this group ended like this, I would have it perfectly predicted uh, it is tough to say because surely Belgium are going to show up. Or are they just completely and utterly washed? They're washed. Maybe, maybe. But right now, Croatia, are in a, they're in the driver's seat. They know what they need to do. And it's just up to Belgium. Show up. And also, Morocco, do your job. Beat Canada. And just assure yourself because if you if Belgium and Croatia draw and then Morocco lose... If Morocco lose by a certain amount of goals, it ain't great. It ain't great. So, it all fascinating. Obviously, Canada eliminated, like I talked about. And yeah, that's that's about it. Anything else? That's why I don't gas up Canada after their CONCACAF wins. Look, man, Canada played They played very well during this World Cup. They just... 
defensively were just at times shambolic today. Really shambolic for the first goal and then for the obviously the fourth goal. They're pushing for the goal, but yeah. And bigger game for Belgium. They've been so disappointing. Agreed. And uh, we and now this is what happened to German national team in decline. And we'll probably have a video about that after the World Cup. Lukaku should be back for the Croatia game. Yep, we'll see if he starts though. And if Lukaku shows up, goodbye Croatia. If not, goodbye Belgium. Yeah, but we don't know what sort of fitness Lukaku is in, people. He hasn't played for what now? Five weeks? Four weeks? So let's see with Lukaku. Let's see with Lukaku. But clinicalness from Croatia, a passing masterclass, and they are looking good. Like I knew they would be heading into this World Cup. I know the Morocco game was difficult and a little bit worried with the attack, but today they just showed if they can be clinical, they can be a very dangerous side because defensively they are so, so solid. And now it's time for the big one, people. Germany versus Spain. We will be live after the game for the match reaction. And oh, we could have a lot to discuss today. We could have a lot to discuss tonight, people. So get the popcorn, get the meal. And then after the game, you come here to the Michael Talks Football channel and we discuss if Germany lose eh, or if Germany win, craziness. Absolute craziness. See you after the match. Have a beautiful day. Remember to hit the like button on this stream. If we can get up to, let's see how many likes we're on. We're on 20 likes. That's good enough for me, people. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And I will see you after Germany, Spain.